Right. Welcome to our very first edition of Gentle Mat Yoga for the Care of Waldenstroms. Today, we're just going to focus on getting started with a mat practice. So what this means is we're going to be working on those transitions, safe transitions down to the floor and back up and back down again. Um, for this class, you will need a yoga mat. And since we're starting at the beginning of everything, I like to talk a little bit about a yoga mat. That's right. I really prefer about a five millimeter yoga mat, which has some padding, but is not as so thick that when you're in a balanced posture, you're going to be all like you're walking on marshmallows. So five millimeters seems to be a really good um, uh, thickness. Whatever you have today is great. Even if you don't have a yoga mat, you can still do yoga. Even if you don't have yoga leggings, you can still do yoga. Um, we're also going to be working with something you can use as a strap today. So a yoga strap is what I have, and that means it's not stretchy and it has a little buckle at the end. We're not going to be using the buckle, but why don't you go ahead and grab what you have in, in, in the way of yoga props. So yoga mat, yoga strap. If you're, um, if you happen to also have yoga blocks, I have, I use these all the time, love them. And I like the slightly thicker ones, right? For a variety of reasons, but you do you. And if you don't have yoga blocks, that's okay. Yeah. And I see you've got a cork one there. So they're a little bit heavier, right? So we'll bear that in mind. Um, and also, I mean, we're just bringing out all the things today. Um, all the things that you have, a pillow for our rest pose at the end, a blanket for our rest pose at the end, and a chair if you need support for those transitions getting up and down for any balanced postures um, along the way. So those, those are the things we're going to need for today's class. Um, and we're going to just begin at the beginning. Okay, so our very first limb of yoga is the niyamas. This is the way we hold ourselves in the world. And the very first niyama is ahimsa or nonviolence. So nonviolence, I'm going to choose a nonviolent way to get down onto the floor. And I'm going to be thinking about this throughout our session today. How can I take the utmost care and kindness of myself? So I have a chair here. I have a blanket. I'm going to, without rounding my back, rest my hands on my chair. And with the good knee, if I have a bad knee, I'm going to take the good knee and bend it and bring it down onto my blanket, bring the other knee down, and then I'll go ahead and sit on my tuffet, I like to call it. Sitting on my tuffet and just taking this blanket or block underneath my seat and finding my seated posture. So this is the beginning. We're beginning at the beginning. What is my seated posture? That might mean if you don't feel comfortable sitting down on the earth like this, you could sit in a chair for some of our seated postures. If you get into this posture and you can't help but completely round your back, find some other way to sit, right? So that might mean I bring both of my blocks and create a little throne for myself. I folded both knees underneath me and I'm sitting on the edge of my throne here. So this is a seated hero's pose and you can see what this looks like from the side. Right, so I want to have my hips higher than my knees. This will help me get a good deep breath. And we're not going to be here long, my friends, but um, I want to develop our seated posture so that we can have a meditation practice eventually. So Gordon, come on up a little higher, get your other block, two blocks. Give me two blocks and come up as high as you can. That's good. So we want that nice straight spine. And today I brought my Shruti box. So we're going to start with a little bit of Om and then some bees breath. Okay. So find your comfortable seat. And I am totally fine if you need to go sit in a chair for this, if you don't feel comfortable. I'm also totally fine if you want to recline for this. 
So let's go ahead and start. Maybe you want to close the eyes. And take a couple of easy breaths with me. Breathing in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. Easy breath in, easy breath out. Letting the belly be soft, breathing in, breathing out. And joining me in the creation of one ohm, or just listening. Continuing on with just some humming of bee's breath. Mm. Let it be easy. See if you can do three more. welcoming you. Now I feel like I'm really here. So let's work on coming out of our seated posture safely and coming to lie on the back. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I have a blanket and this could be support underneath my head to start. And I would like you to focus more on listening me than watching me but do feel free to let me know if there are any continuing audio issues so I'm coming to lie on the back with my knees bent I've got some support underneath my head and I'm gonna take a moment to adjust to this posture throughout our class today we're gonna to be moving really slowly and mindfully So just take a moment to bring my arms out to the sides with the palms facing up. I'll walk my feet out to the width of my mat. And then I'm just going to wash the knees from side to side. So I've got a nice wide stance with my feet. And I'm not going to the extreme most far range that I can go at first. I'm just loosening things up in my hip flexors, in my low back. Finding this grounding connection with the earth. Moving my knees from side to side. These are called windshield wipers and I love doing these if I'm having um, back issues or if I've been sitting for a while can be a wonderful way to release a little bit of tension. Make sure you those feet are nice and wide. All right, and then I'll slowly come back and I'll work towards hugging my knees into my chest, right? And I might rock and roll a little bit side to side, massage the low back. And then I'll keep my right knee hugged in and I'll bring my left foot either onto the earth or I can extend that left leg long. And I'm just hugging that right knee in. 
grabbing hold of the back of the right thigh and pushing my foot up towards the ceiling. I'm going to make some circles with my ankle. So I'm getting a little hamstring stretch, I'm circling my ankle. The, the leg does not have to be straight, right? I'm just getting my body moving. A little bit of movement in a lot of places. Okay, hugging that right knee back in and switching sides, the left knee coming up, the right leg coming down, foot on the earth or leg extended, both are great, whatever feels best for you. Grabbing onto the back of my left thigh, pushing my foot up towards the ceiling, making some circles with my ankles, with my toes. and then hugging that knee back in and planting both feet down on the earth about hips distance apart. And if you have a block and you want to use a block for this, you could take a block between the thighs. And I'm going to remove my neck support now for what I'm going to call bridge pulses. So a lot of you already know this bridge pose where we're lifting our hips up off the earth. Um, but I might kind of get there a little bit slowly. And I want to make sure I'm never turning my head while I'm doing this because it puts a lot of flexion into the cervical spine. So I want to make sure I'm just keeping that nice and upright. I'm looking up at the ceiling. And I'm going to start by lifting my hips just a little bit and then bringing them back down. So I'm going to do a few rounds of just the hips, breathing in. Breathing out, if you have a block, lightly squeeze the block. Breathing in, breathing out, coming up and down. And then if you would like to add the arms, we're gonna inhale, lift the hips and the arms all the way overhead, back behind you, exhaling the arms and hips down. So we're waving hello to the day. Inhaling, lifting everything, Exhaling, coming back down. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be loose. It can be sloppy. Above all, it is gentle. Maybe we'll do one or two more, getting that little extension of the spine. Great way to wake up. And then this last one, I'm going to leave my arms reaching overhead and slowly come down. See if I can feel each vertebra as I bring the hips down. Really nice, guys. Taking the hands down, removing the block if you've used one, and taking another set of those windshield wipers with the arms to the sides, walking the feet apart, and washing those knees from side to side. So this is a really nice, those, Little stretches we just did, really nice way to support back health. Lots of us caring for back issues. So knees moving side to side, doesn't have to be as far as you possibly can go. All right. And then I'm going to come up to sit however feels best. It might mean I roll onto my side and I push my way up. And I'm going to be moving towards my hands and knees posture. So hands and knees, those of us with tender knees, are going to pad up underneath the knees. Many of us care for issues in the hands and the wrists. You could also pad up underneath the hands. Or you could use blocks underneath the hands, gripping them in a way that feels more stabilizing to you. So however you would like to practice hands and knees, we're coming to our hands and knees, and we're going to start with something a little subtle here. So these are called scapular push-ups. All I'm going to do is to let my chest sink down and squeeze my shoulder blades together. And then I'm pushing into the earth and letting the shoulder blades slide to the side. So my arms are straight, and the only thing moving are really my shoulder blades here, chest sinking down, squeezing shoulder blades, pushing into the earth, and I'm breathing as I do this. And like I said, it's subtle. It might not be something that 
you get right away and that's okay. And then this might naturally morph into a larger spinal movement. So I might be arching my back and coming back to neutral, pulling my belly in and tilting my pelvis, avoiding rounding my back if I have osteoporosis. I could be arching my back and fully rounding my back if I'm cleared to do so. If you're not sure, stay with the neutral rather than the aggressive rounding. Breathing in, breathing out. Let's take one more. All right, and then I'm gonna tuck my toes under and just walk my hands back a little bit. And if this feels like too much pressure on your knees, modify. I'm looking for a toe stretch and I'm gonna practice my lion's pose here. So my lion's pose includes opening my mouth as wide as feels good, sticking out my tongue as far as feels okay, and then making a little ha sound like a lion roaring. Beautiful. Then I'm walking back to my hands and knees and I'm going to stretch my right leg long. With the toe on the earth, I'm going to rock forward, rock back, stretch the calf, stretch the shin. And then I'm working towards bringing my right foot up off the earth, pulling my belly up towards my spine and spider walking my left hand forward maybe lifting my left arm up off the earth for my bird dog or balancing tiger. And then releasing that and we'll switch sides. So walking that left foot back, toe on the earth to start. Rock forward, rock back. So we're just gonna warm up the calf first. And then I'll lift my left heel straight out from the hip, belly towards the spine. Spider walk that right hand forward. I'm tucking my chin here. My head is in line with my spine. That's good, Bev. And then I'm releasing down. So if you want to take a break for your wrist, you can take a break. Or you might feel like flowing opposite arm, opposite leg, moving with your breath, extending and grounding, breathing in, breathing out. And your mind is right at your core. Let's take one more on each side. And then I'm going to come into my version of a child's pose. This may or may not be something that's comfortable for you, so let's try it slowly. I'm going to separate my knees and sink back towards my heels. If my knees say no, I could bring my blanket between my thighs and my hips. I might walk my hands forward and I might bring something underneath my head to bring the floor up to me. I'd prefer not to be really rounding the spine here as well. So I'm gonna find my child's pose, what feels good to me, right? Including skipping it, if it does not feel good to me, remembering ahimsa or nonviolence. And my goal here is to just bring some space into my back and maybe breathe into the back. Notice where you feel the breath. When you're ready to come out, come slowly. I'm walking myself towards my chair, I'm placing my hands up on the chair. I'm balancing on both knees. I'm gonna step one foot forward, tuck the back toe under, and come up to stand. Right, so that's a transition up, and I'm just checking in to see how you guys are doing. All right, Lisa and friends, so glad you made your way here today. So take your time coming up. If you need to stay just resting on the earth, that's always an option. Okay, 
Wonderful, wonderful to see you all practicing mat yoga with me. Taking that sip of water if you need it. And I'm just gonna make sure none of my props are in my way for a little bit of standing yoga. I'm gonna always start with the foundation, my feet, the foundation of my balance. So I'm just gonna notice my feet. I might want to have my chair nearby if I need a little extra support today. I'm gonna to pick up all 10 toes, spread them wide, dig them back down. And you might wanna look down and see which toes are doing what you're asking of them. So we're picking up all 10 toes, spreading them, digging them back down. And we'll do one or two more like that, doing our toe yoga. Very important. Breathing in, breathing out. All right. And then let's go ahead and come up onto the tiptoes and back down. So I might just explore what feels right to me. It might be a tiny little lift. I might be working towards a longer lift and a longer, slower release down. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Maybe the arms want to get involved, maybe they don't, totally up to you. Maybe you want to do a little crane action, bring the fingertips together at the top. And as you come down, those um, fingertips can widen out to the sides. Breathing in. Breathing out. This was from our Tai Chi class with Rami. Beautiful. Let's take one more. All right. Then I'm going to bend my knees a little bit and bring my hips back without rounding my back. I'm going to pull my belly towards my spine and isometrically push my feet apart, not moving my feet, but just isometrically. My feet are about hips width distance apart. So you can really feel the glute muscles turning on here. I'll bring my arms down at my sides with the palms facing each other. And we're gonna inhale and swoop up, straightening the knees. Exhale, come on down, weight is in the heels. Breathing in, chair pulses. Breathing out, sinking down only as far as feels safe for you and your knees. Breathing in, breathing out. You've got it so strong. Inhaling, exhaling. Let's take two more. And last one, you got it. Best one yet, and we're just coming up to stand and walking it out. Walking it out a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and find my strap somewhere underneath my blanket here. So I've got, I've got a strap or something I can use as a strap. It could be a dog leash. It could be a tie. It could be a robe sash. So I've got my strap here, I'm going to take a little bit of a wider stance and my strap is going to come wider than my shoulders. And I'm going to lift that strap up. So I'm opening the armpits. And if you have a, a stretchy band and that's all you have, that's okay. Totally fine. Use what, you, use what you've got. You could use a scarf. And I'm just going to be side bending from side to side with strong legs. Breathing in, breathing out. I'm only going as far as feels good to me today. Really nice movement for supporting respiratory health. Right? Lots of us experiencing recurring respiratory infections. This could be something you add to your everyday. Let's take one more on each side. That's good. Maybe you're done. If you're done, you're done. That's okay too. 
Beautiful. And then I'm going to bring my strap behind my back and maybe just shoulder distance apart with my palms facing away from my body. And we'll take some lifts. So see if you can get those hands back and maybe it's a little bit wider than shoulder distance. Make sure it feels good to you. My palms are facing away from my body. I'm breathing in, lifting up, breathing out, releasing down. Not a contest to see how far I can go. This is something that can help me increase um, mobility in my shoulders and sort of turn on those muscles alongside of the upper spine where I often sort of develop that slack muscle rounded back situation. You got it. Let's take three more. Inhale. Exhale. Got it. Inhale. Exhale. Really nice. Last one. All right. And then I'm just going to place my strap down near my mat for later. Take that sip of water. We'll move into some more classic yoga poses. Let's go ahead and take the right foot forward and bring the left foot back at an angle with a nice wide stance for my warrior one. So if I feel like I'm walking on a wire here, I'll walk my right foot to the right and I'm bending into my right knee. Squeezing that left glute. My hips are pointing to the top of my mat here and I'm going to bring my hands to heart center. Pulling my belly towards my spine. See if I can find three breaths. All right, and then let's shorten our stance a little bit. And I'm going to grab opposite elbow behind my back opposite forearm or opposite wrist. See how this feels for you. And we're just going to be with both legs straight. Both legs are straight. I'm tipping the heart forward while tucking my chin and only going down as far as feels good without rounding my back. Again, not a contest to see how far I can go down. I want to stay integrated with the belly pulling towards the spine, and I'm not leading with my chin, I'm leading with my heart. Finding a few breaths here in our pyramid pose. Slowly making my way up. I'm going to take my hands to my hips, and I'm going to start to bring the weight into my right foot, and just step up with that left knee and step right back. Step up with the left knee and step right back. Up with the left knee and right back. And then I might hold and place that left leg down. We'll switch, we'll do all of that on the other side. So I've got the left foot forward and the right foot back at an angle. My hips are to the top of my mat. I'm bending into my left knee, squeezing that right glute muscle. Hands come to heart center for those three easy breaths. Here I am in my gentle warrior one. Beautiful, my friends. Take the hands to the hips for a moment. We'll shorten our stances, keeping our legs straight and grabbing opposite forearm behind the back of what you did before, which one's on top. I'm taking a bow leading with my heart, slowly folding. Maybe I'm peeking down at my left toe and finding a few easy breaths here. Tuck that chin. That's good, Anne. Slowly making my way up. Hands to the hips. 
and I'm going to start to bring the weight in my left foot, pick up my right knee and bring it back. Stepping that right leg up and stepping it back. Stepping it up and back and maybe I want to hold, see if I can balance there for a millisecond. Good, and then place the hands back down. Place the legs back down. We're going to inhale both arms up and exhale hands to heart center. Breathing in, arms rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Three more, inhale, reach up. Grab a little slice of what you need. Bring it into your heart center. And last one. All right, you guys are doing great. Let's go ahead and come into a warrior two posture. So I'm gonna start with a wider stance and I'm just gonna circle my hips a little bit to bring some juice into my hips before I get into this warrior two. Remember, it's always an option to sit a pose out or to change a pose, make it harder for yourself, make it easier for yourself. And then with this nice wide stance, I'm gonna bring my right toes to the right and angle my left foot in a little bit, sink into my right knee. My hips and my torso keep wanting to move this way, but I'm going to face my hips and my torso towards you. Maybe my hands can start at heart center and I'm squeezing all of those muscles along my hips and in my legs. And then I'll bring my wingspan out, palms facing down, and I'll just gaze over that right hand towards my goal or towards that which I am looking for support in. Maybe there's an intention you're working with. I am strong. I take good care of myself. Letting those shoulders soften a little bit. I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna re, um, flip my right hand, trace the ceiling as I straighten my right leg for reverse warrior. You got it, big stretch. And then we're coming down, hands to the hips, all 10 toes to the side of the mat. I'm gonna take a slow, wide-legged forward fold, hands sliding down the legs, and I'm avoiding rounding my back here if I have osteoporosis, right? I might wanna just sort of stay kind of upright, lifted with my hands on my legs. If I have farther to travel, I could bring my hands down onto the earth. I'm not gonna force it. I'm gonna find what feels right to me today and take a couple breaths. Looking good, Gordon. Slowly make my way up. You've got it. Let's bring the left toes to the left. Angle the right foot in and bend that left knee as far as feels good to you. I'm looking for stability, not some, you know, perfectionism I see on Instagram with my warrior two. My heart is towards you, my hips are towards you, and then I'll float my wings out, palms facing down, hugging all those muscles along the bones so that I can strengthen the bones as I tilt my gaze to the left and find my intention. See if I could soften my shoulders. And then I'm moving into reverse warrior, flipping that left hand, tracing the ceiling with my left hand, that left leg can straighten, I'm reaching up and back. You got it. And then we're coming back, hands to the hips, all 10 toes, and we're gonna do another wide-legged forward fold. This time there is an option to either use your strap behind your back or interlace your fingers and um, as you fold forward, the arms are gonna lift up away from the back of your body. So your legs are really strong here. And I'm leading again, not with my chin, but with my heart, I'm tucking that chin and I'm gonna find what feels good to me. 
Easy breaths. And inhaling, letting my arms lead the way back up. Releasing my hands, releasing my strap, walking it out, dancing it out, any little movements that would feel good. If I really need to release energy, you know, I might want to be just swinging my whole arms up and over. You got it. Boogie down. And then we'll move into our balance pose and then we'll start to wind down. So let's go ahead and make sure you have support if you need it in the form of a wall, in the form of a chair. And if you're practicing with a caregiver or friend, you could be doing a partner tree if you want. Maybe we'll cover that some other time. I'm going to start with a little bendy bounce to my knees before I come into my tree pose. I'm going to bring my weight into my right foot, pick up my left heel and open the knee to the side. So this might be where I stay with my toe on the ground the whole time. I'm going to zip everything up. That's right. So my core is really activated here. Hands can come to heart center and I'm working towards bringing my foot up onto my legs anywhere but the knee. Again, little soft bends in that right knee. Maybe you're holding onto your chair the whole time. If you feel like you're kind of collapsing into this, remember to zip your core up, breathing in, breathing out. You got it. If you fall out of it, come back and then let's come out of it. Kick that right leg out, lubricate that right knee, and then we'll switch it up. Weight in the left foot, little bend to that left leg. Pick up the right heel, open that knee to the side, however far feels good to you zipping everything up and working towards finding what feels best for me with that leg. That foot could come up to the calf. You could manually tuck it up into the thigh area. You keep it on the ground. Finding my breath, finding my wobble and letting the wobble be there. Totally natural. You've got it. Touch down when you need it. And one more breath and kick it out. You guys are great. Great job. So let's take a sip of water and then we're going to transition to the floor. Transitioning to the floor safely. So however you want to get there. Personally, I'm going to practice my good habit of flat back folding forward bringing my hands to my chair, stepping my good knee back and down, balancing on both knees for a moment, and then coming to sit on my tuckus. <laughs> so let's grab a block if you have it, or you could squeeze a pillow. I'm going to take the, that block between the legs, between the ankles. And I'm coming to a pose called staff pose, which should be easier than it is. It's actually a very difficult pose. So I'm sitting up. If I have to use support, if I'm, if I'm rounding here in my back, I want to bring my hands behind me for support. So I'm squeezing that black lightly. My hands are down at my sides or behind me for support. And I'm just working on sitting up here. This is all this is. And you could do this while you're watching TV sometime. See if you could take three breaths. All right, I'm taking my block away and I'm going to hug my right knee in. I'm measuring about a fists with distance between my leg and my foot. And if you're not able to stay up too straight here, you're going to be really gentle with this, but I'm engaging that left leg and I'm taking a slow, easy twist to the right and bringing my right arm down behind me like a kickstand. And so sitting up nice and tall, twisting to the right. 
That left leg is engaged, so my left heel is not even touching the earth. Peeking over that right shoulder, using those core muscles to twist. Kind of different than when we do it in a chair, isn't it? And then we'll switch sides. So I'm going to bring my left leg in, bending the left knee, measuring that little bit of distance between the foot and the leg. Sitting up tall and twisting to the left, left hand behind me, peeking over my left shoulder. That right leg is engaged. Big breath in, twist a little deeper and then come back to center. Bring the soles of the feet together the knees drifting out to the sides and we'll take a couple butterfly flaps here. I'm gonna let the, the hips be loose, relaxed. Some of us are very open in the hips. A lot, some of us are very tight in the hips. And so just working with what you have today, not judging either one. All right, and then I'm gonna come Back to my reclining posture. I'm going to grab my strap. I'm going to grab a blanket. And I'm going to make sure I also have a block nearby. If I'm using a block, totally optional. So coming to lie on the earth. Knees are bent to start. Soles of the feet on the earth, knees are bent. I've got some neck support underneath my head. All right. I'm going to take my strap and I'm going to make a loop and step my right foot into that loop. I'm going to take a piece of the strap in each hand and then I'm going to extend my left leg long. Options, of course, to keep the left knee bent, that's fine. So I'm working towards an active stretch here. I'm both pushing my foot into the strap and pulling the strap back. My leg does not have to be straight here. Many of us have very tight hamstrings. It's just how our muscles are. There's nothing wrong with you. I'm going to take some breaths here, easy breaths. I'm going to relax my shoulders, relax my jaw. And then let's see what it would feel like to bring the strap into just the right hand. Strap is in just the right hand. I'm going to bring my left arm over to the left, relaxing on the earth and slowly opening my right leg to the right. Maybe my bend my arm and my elbow is like a kickstand to the right. Finding what feels right for me. That's good. One more breath. And come on back to center. Let's try crossing the midline of the body a little bit to stretch that IT band. Take some breaths. And then we'll release to center. Step the left foot up into your strap to switch sides. Grabbing a piece of the strap with each hand. Maybe that right leg extends. And I'm looking towards straightening my left leg, pushing the foot into the strap, pulling the strap back and relaxing where I can relax, like the shoulders or the jaw. Can you find three easy breaths here? Taking the strap into the left hand, right arm out to the right for foundational support. And then I'm opening my left leg to the left, 
as far as feels safe to me, I'm trying to keep my right hip down as I do this. So maybe I bend my left arm and the elbow acts like a kickstand if I go that far. And if I don't go that far, that's okay too. Big breath. That's good. And make your way back to center. Cross the midline of the body. So we're coming back to center with that and releasing the strap down, bending the knees, and we're going to take that right ankle over the left knee. So you might already be feeling a lot of sensation here. If you're not, you could come up onto the left tiptoe, or you could reach up through the window of the legs, grab onto the back of that left thigh. So I'm hugging that leg in and getting a really good stretch to the outside of my right hip. Left foot down, cross the knee all the way over so the knees are nestling, same side. And I'm just loosely dropping my knees towards the left as I open my right arm to the right. I'm trying to keep my right shoulder on the earth. Maybe you want to prop up under the knees for support for this gentle, gentle twist. If it feels too intense, you could uncross the legs and have the feet and the knees together and just drop the knees to one side. So I'm looking for a gentle twist here. Right, or whatever feels best. Slowly relaxing back to center. And we'll do those same two poses on the other side, crossing the left ankle over the right knee. Either coming up onto the right tiptoe or reaching up and grabbing onto that right thigh, hugging the leg in, finding my easy breaths. Placing the right foot down when you're ready. Crossing the knee all the way over. The knees are nestling. I'm dropping my knees over to the right side. My left arm is opening to the left. And I'm just letting gravity and breath do the work here. Kind of letting go of my practice a little bit. Maybe I don't have to work so hard. Maybe I don't have to do so much. Maybe I can just allow myself this next little while to just be. When you're ready, you can release back to center, hug the knees into the chest one last time. Rock and roll, and then if you have a pillow, Standing by, you can take that underneath the knees for our final rest pose, Shavasana. So taking a pillow under the knees, I've got some support under my head. I'm going to make myself as comfortable as I can get. That might include putting on a layer if you get cold easily. That might include grabbing an eye pillow and placing it over your eyes. I'm going to kind of pick up my limbs and move them a little farther away from my body. So I'm getting some space in my body here. Coming into our final pose, Shavasana. A little bit of sound support here. 
I'll invite you to take a breath in and as you exhale, you can let go of holding the base of the skull. Little by little, we're going to release effort from the body. Breathing in and letting go of effort through the shoulders, all the way down the length of both arms. Taking a breath in, and as I exhale, I'm letting go of effort throughout my whole back, down the length of my spine. Letting my hips be heavy. Letting go of doing. Taking a breath in and allowing my legs to relax. Do nothing. All the way down to my toes. just a moment longer to marinate in your essence, recognizing that we are more than just physical bodies. Take a breath, lick my lips, swallow. 
stretch through my fingers and toes and gently roll onto one side. Give myself a hug of gratitude for making this time. And gradually come on up to sit with me. We'll close with our bees breath again. So finding that seated posture, whatever it might look like, we won't be here long. Just noticing your state of being. Does it feel different from when you came into class? And when you're ready, you can come to sit and get support however you need it. Closing with a few bees breaths, just humming, breathing in. Taking hands to heart center or resting one hand on the heart, if it's in your practice today. We'll close with the sound of one Om and three Shantis for peace. You can listen or join in. Breathing in. Thanking you so much for your practice today, friends. Namaste.